Hey guys, I'm Greta Kate. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in a small town in the heart of Wisconsin. I usually have a lot to say, so I'm glad you're here to listen. Grab a latte and a cozy blanket and let's chat. This is the Greta Kate Homebody Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Greta Kate Homebody Podcast. I got it together this week, you guys, even though it's a day late. And despite having my son home from school all week with the flu, so today we'll be chatting about falling in love with your home again. This morning, I'm drinking my go-to coffee, a cinnamon dolce latte from Starbucks. So thank you so much to Annie and Rochelle for supporting the podcast this week. If you'd like to support the show and get a shout out on the podcast, you can do so by making a donation at buymeacoffee.com slash homebody. I had this realization this week that this podcast is all about loving your home and being cozy at home and all the things, but what if you don't actually like your home? You might listen to me talk on and on about my house and how it's cozy and all the things, but it wasn't always that way. And there's been a lot of variables over the years of living here that stress me out. And so I'm going to kind of tackle how I was able to overcome those things and be in love with where I am at. I've also mentioned before in previous episodes that the home we're in now is not our forever home. We bought this house as a flip home and gave ourselves five to 10 years to finish it before we buy some land and build or find a place back out in the country where we were before we moved here in town. Now, my heart really longs to be out in the country still, and it has for the last six years, but I've learned to be content and love this home in the middle of our city in the meantime. I also lived in homes that absolutely drove me crazy that were rentals. I had this tiny little two-bedroom apartment that might as well have been a cardboard box and a farmhouse on five acres, which, oh my gosh, I loved that part. It was on five acres. It butted up to public land. The river was right there. It was awesome. But the house itself had this absolutely ridiculous layout and it was so ugly. But to be honest, I'm so thankful that our landlord actually refused to sell us the house because it would have taken so much work to make that space function properly. Needless to say, I was restless in both of those homes, and I wish that I would have taken the time to actually make them cozy and peaceful rather than stressing out so much about how much I didn't like them. So this episode is definitely for you if you can relate to Jim Carrey yelling, I've had it with this dump in Dumb and Dumber because I have been there. If you're like me, you love HGTV. My favorite show is No Demo Reno, and I love Pinterest. I think most of my pins on Pinterest are for our current home renovation and for our future build. But I do think that consuming so much of that can cause discontentment and jealousy if you're constantly thinking about what you don't have versus what you have and making the most of your current situation. If you're also like me, you probably bought a house based on the footprint of the home, or maybe you're renting based on the size and the cost of the rental, but you didn't really rent it or purchase it because of the cosmetics, thinking if you're in your house that you could update those later. But we all know that when you are a homeowner, there are more uh, important financial things than the cosmetics of your home that come up like repairs or vehicle maintenance or medical or whatever. And those old finishes and cosmetic upgrades kind of go by the wayside. So if you're in the same camp I was and not loving where you are, or you're in a home right now, that's just not exactly what you want. Just remember that you were either in need and found the place you're in, or you did love it at one time. So try to find a way to be grateful for just having a place to live, having a shelter over your head first and foremost. So let's jump into the first reason why I think you fall out of love with your home. Sometimes I don't think it's the home itself, even though most homes aren't perfect. But the main reason you fall out of love with your home is because of what's in it. Usually the clutter. Clutter doesn't happen all at once. It's a slow process over time, but it's super overwhelming to tackle when it becomes out of control. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I love the show Hoarders. And sometimes I just want to like jump through my TV and start organizing those people's homes. I don't know. That's just me. It's probably not you. But even just watching one episode like lights a fire under my butt to organize and clean my own home. I think I've actually said this before, but it's worth repeating. 
Everything you bring into your home takes up not only physical space, but also mental space. Your brain processes clutter as indecisiveness, um, decisions that are unmade. So that can cause anxiousness and make you feel overwhelmed or down. Your home is supposed to be a safe space, you know, where you can come home and relax and find peace. And the more clutter you have, you'll find that even like basic cleaning chores and repairs go on the back burner because when you do have to go to clean your house, you're going to do one of two things. Either you're cleaning up the clutter or you're cleaning around it. And that just doesn't do much for your space. Honestly, the more minimal you go, the easier home maintenance is and being home won't feel so overwhelming. Like I said, it's harder to clean when you have so much clutter. So when you do have less, you can actually see the clean in your space. And being able to see that clean and that transformation of clean after you do your chores feels like a relief and it takes that weight off your shoulders. For example, if your kitchen has clutter or decor on every inch of the countertop, it's going to be harder to feel content and relaxed after you clean because all that stuff is still staring at you right in the face. And it becomes this like vicious cycle of effort with no reward that makes you think there's really no point in cleaning. You'll be so surprised how much better you like a room in your house when it's actually clean. Having a bigger house or a different house or renovating is not going to be the solution for you if you just have too much stuff. And it could be an expensive solution too. A home equity loan, a more expensive mortgage or rent payment, moving costs, storage units. There is other low cost options available to you, but the cheapest one is free. And that is decluttering. Sometimes we're so frustrated with our situation that we actually blame our house rather than ourselves. Like it's our house or apartment's fault that the kitchen doesn't have enough cabinets or that the closet in your bedroom isn't big enough for all your clothes. But you need to remember that you are the one that actually has full control of what you bring into your home and what you let go of. I know that's a little bit of tough love, you guys, but definitely need to be said. And it is definitely the number one step in making you fall in love with your home again. So after you're done decluttering and cleaning, you can start to look at different inexpensive options to make you feel cozier and relax. If you walk into a certain room and it doesn't make you feel good, how can you make it better? Last summer, we were plumbing our lower level bathroom in. There was already a shower and sink when we moved into the house, so we added a toilet. And this year, we're finishing up the bathroom by like actually adding walls up. But I was super frustrated at that time because my main bathroom was like a dark hole in the wall. I hated being in there. I hated showering in there. I hated spending time in there, washing my face, whatever, all the things. It just was not peaceful. The walls were like this like tannish, taupe, brown, gross color. And everything in the bathroom was super dated. Still is. Because we just spent a couple thousand dollars in the bathroom downstairs there really wasn't much wiggle room for me to get new tiles or new hardware, a new vanity or flooring and do a full reno upstairs. So instead, I settled for a gallon of paint in this like light gray with like purple undertones, very spa like color. And I painted the walls. And then I got these window clings for our window because we have a full window right inside where the bathtub is and put those up for some added privacy. And then I propagated my pothos plants. And honestly, it feels like an entire new room. I maybe spent like $60. And I would love new tiles, new hardware, and a bigger bathroom. Yeah, obviously I would. But this small change took the ick factor away from having to be in my bathroom. And taking that stress and that anxiety of actually being in that room took it away. You could also do like a soft goods refurb, what it's called. Um, replacing or adding new pillows or blankets to your couches and chairs and your bed, changing out a rug, putting out a new tablecloth, those types of things to give your space a boost. On Black Friday this year, I snagged a new king size comforter for my queen size bed for $36. And it's honestly transformed our bedroom. It's so much more spa like and peaceful in our room now. Thrift stores are also an amazing way to find new pieces to replace Notice I said replace because we don't want to just bring new stuff into your space. I love a good thrift store and finding things that bring me joy that I know will make my house feel cozy or bring joy to the space, to the people that are in my home and the people that are visiting as well as myself. 
The other thing is, is I'm giving you low cost options because I don't want you to put yourself in debt for an upgrade. You don't have to. If you're watching HGTV and you're watching these people spend $40,000 on a new bathroom, like think about the long-term benefits versus the short-term benefits. If you're going to stay in your house, you are stuck with a $40,000 home equity loan for that new bathroom until it's paid off. If you're selling your house, you may not get that $40,000 back in equity because homes are selling right now for no matter what. So it might not even be worth the upgrade. And the people that are buying the house might not even have the same style as you. So next, you guys, I'm going to share how to make a plan to love your home again. And I'll do that right after this. All right, you guys. So if you do hear some background noise, my daughter is awake. I normally get this recorded before she wakes up, but she is up. She is right behind me playing Play-Doh. So if you hear chatting, it's just her. Are you ready for your practical plan? Before I give you my four steps, I just want to remind you guys that your home is not a destination. It'll always be a journey. I know that sounds really, really cheesy, but it's true. Even if you're in a new build home, you're always going to have work to do. You will always have repairs and cleaning and all the things. So use what you have to bless your family and bless visitors in your home. Your house has a purpose, whether you're there for a week or a year or 50 years. It's there to serve as a shelter and a place of refuge for you. There is no magical switch that turns on when you get to a new home that will make everything magically better. Just remember that. All right, so here are my four practical steps to falling in love with your home again. The first is to declutter. I know we talked about it. It's overwhelming. I get it. So what you need to do is make a plan. You'll go one room at a time, one space at a time, and always start with the easiest. If you have a room that's super overwhelming, do it last because you don't want to get so stressed out in that space that you quit altogether. If you start easy and you have a plan in place, you can start to see the pathway to your goal and build your momentum and your confidence in yourself to declutter along the way. So when you get to that thorn in your side room, you'll be prepared to tackle it and have the experience from the other spaces in your house to get it done efficiently. As an example, if I'm going to start this process, I'm going to first write down all the rooms in my home and then list in order of easiest to hardest to declutter. So for example, my dining room doesn't need any decluttering because it's just a table, chairs, and a few plants. So I can check that one right off my list. Let's just say my living room is the next easiest. Under my living room, I would write down all the areas that need decluttering. The front hall closet, storage cabinet, my office area, and my entertainment center. And then I'll order those easiest to hardest and start with the easiest. So make yourself a decluttering and cleaning roadmap basically throughout your home and just take a little at a time until it's done. It might take you a year but you'll feel so much better as you walk through that process and build on your own success. You could also take before and after pictures so you could remind yourself of where your space was and where it is now. So that's step one. Step one is a big step. It's a lot of work. So I promise that steps two through four are a lot easier. Step two is to make a gratitude list. What is everything that you're thankful for in your space? The number of bedrooms, your location, yard, having a dishwasher, having a garage, whatever it is, why do you actually like your home? We get so caught up in complaining, like I said earlier, that we end up becoming like Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life, just griping about everything that is in our home. So quick story about that. That farmhouse that I told you guys about that we lived in with the really weird layout, it had very little closet space. And when you have five kids and two adults living in that home, you need closet space. There was just one tiny closet in the main bedroom, no closets in two of the bedrooms, and only a bar to hang clothes on in the fourth bedroom. There were two small closets in the second floor and landing, but they were so awkward that they were almost dysfunctional. So unless I was going to take away a bedroom from one of the kids and make the small downstairs bedroom a closet, there was like no space for me to even store like a vacuum or a broom or anything like that. So when we bought our house, I just remember being so grateful for the ridiculous amount of closet space throughout our home. All right. Step three to fall in love with your home again is to get off social media if it's triggering you. There are people with nicer stuff and nicer homes. And if you are easily getting caught up in lack, you'll never love where you are. 
Stop following people with elevated lives if it's harming your own. Just as a reality check, most people have basic homes and basic decor and basic lives. You're not an exception. It's okay to dream, but just don't get lost in your dream. And finally, step number four is to treat your home with love. When you're done decluttering, especially clean your house and make repairs and treat your home with care. Make it a priority. I heard this tip to sell your house to yourself. I thought it was brilliant. When you list your house for sale, you clean your house like crazy and you make sure it's in top shape for the realtor to come and take pictures for an open house. So the tip was to sell your house to yourself. Give yourself the ability to love the home you're in. All right, you guys, what do you think? A little pre-Valentine's Day love episode? Honestly, I didn't even really plan that out until I was looking at the calendar this morning and started recording, but I hope it was helpful if you're stuck and you're struggling in your space. As always, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you're interested in checking out my shop or subscribing to our weekly emails so we can stay in touch, you can visit forestmer.com. See you next week.